morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Are you liking this fresher weather? Isn't that great? And I do welcome you to be here today. I am president and founder of MS Views and News. This is our officially our 11th MS Symposium. Isn't that great? 11 years we've been doing this. So I wanted to thank our sponsors of today's program. All right, we have a lot of sponsors today. I'm sure that you made it through our resource room. We have our platinum sponsor is Celgene. We have bronze sponsors of Memorial Healthcare System, Sanofi Genzyme, Novartis, and Genentech. We have our community sponsors of Mallinckrodt and Curaleaf, and we have our educational supporter is Biogen. And I hope that you can all give them a round of applause because they deserve it. All right, in addition to them, we have, well, I want to thank all of you for attending, all right? So my thanks to all of you for being here. Thank you very much. We also want to give thanks, please, to our, our, our volunteers, all right? My family. We have a lot of family here today that are helping out, all right? And again, the MS Views and News staff. Of course, we should everybody give everybody a round of applause, all right? Thank you. Thank you. There we go. All right. Craig Dorn was born and raised in Miami-Dade County. He's a gra it was when it was only known as Dade County. All right. He's a graduate of the University of Miami of School of Business and School of Law. Mr. Dorn has focused his 30-year legal career on serving individuals and businesses in a wide variety of areas. His office is in Coral Gables, Florida. He is licensed to practice in all Florida state courts, as well as the Florida Southern and Middle District Federal Courts. He has his own corporate real estate and health floor. He's got his own practice, which includes wills and trusts, corporate real estate, and health law. In addition to the full-time practice of law, he teaches college-level courses as an adjunct professor. He strives to provide his clients with the most cost-effective method to resolve legal problems. Let's, let's welcome Craig Dorn. Hello there, everybody. Although I am from Miami, I do warn you, my roots are from Brooklyn, so if I'm speaking fast or something and I'm going a little too fast, just raise your hand, say slow down, clap, do whatever you want to do, just say, okay, make sure you go a little bit slower. Uh, I'm here to talk about the things that nobody really wants to ever think about, talk about, or even realize that it does exist. So what I'm really going to try to cover today is a lot of issues that I think you all need to pay attention to for your financial as well as your medical care in the future to make sure that you're really protecting yourselves, and not only protecting yourselves, protecting the people that you need to help protect you. So let's talk about what we really need to worry about, which is the creation of legal documents. So let's talk about the difference between documents that are actually created for you, or what happens when somebody, meaning you, don't do what you need to do to protect yourself and your family members. What does that mean? That means that it's not gonna be up to you. That means it's gonna be up to the court system for wherever you live. Which means you might have your next closest relative as being the third cousin twice removed that you haven't seen in 40 years, be the one that the court's gonna say, that's who should be making the decisions for you. This person may have no idea what it is that you want to do with your life, your healthcare, your financial needs, or anything else or may only want to show up to do the worst thing, which is to take all of those things from you. So what happens in that case, if you haven't done anything and you become incapacitated, the proceeding that gets taking place is actually a court proceeding called a guardianship. It means you can't make the decision, the court's gonna have somebody appointed that's gonna take care of everything for you, not only your healthcare needs, but also all of your financial affairs. Wouldn't it be nice if everybody just goes and gets something done and created? And what I'm going to discuss a little bit today is going to be going over what are some of those documents you can take care of. And the best part is I'm going to let you know that some of these documents you can even get for free out there that can help you take care of preparing yourself for your financial future. Because I really don't want, and the thing that bothers me the most, is when I actually get the people crying to me saying, this is what has happened to me. And I've actually had people come to my office when they've had a, been put into a guardianship and they have to figure out a way to get out of it. 
because somebody may be making decisions that are contrary to what that person actually wants. So let's start with the actual easiest part of everything in life. Something that will cost you absolutely nothing to do to help you prepare for your financial future. Which means, what can I do on my accounts to make sure that I get, they go where I want them to go at the time of my passing? Or that the person may have the ability to make some of those decisions for me if I ever become incapacitated? Well, on your bank accounts, your certificates of deposit, your brokerage accounts, your retirement accounts, your life insurance policies. If your bank hasn't given you the proper advice, which unfortunately is far too frequent of a thing, the account exists in your name and everything goes to probate court at the time you're passing. And in the event that you're not capable of taking care of your financial affairs, the people have to go to court, get the guardianship appointed in order for those things to be taken care of. On every one of those accounts, you have the ability to designate a beneficiary. A beneficiary can't make decisions for you, but at the time of your passing, inherits those without even going through probate court. It bypasses all of that just by simply designating a beneficiary on the account. Nice, clean, and simple. But as that doesn't take care of the ability to take care of you when you can't take care of yourself, Another thing you can do if you trust the person, and this is a true case of what I call total trust being needed, you can actually make them a joint owner on your account, which means if you trust them with your money, they can sit down and go and sign checks, take care of your bills and everything for you at a financial cost of zero. Because they have the ability to act on it, but realize that does give them the ability also to close out your account, take all of your money, so you have to choose the person that you trust with those type of affairs. But the scary part is, if we ever become incapacitated, who's going to write the check to pay our bills? Unfortunately, these are things that happen on a daily basis with all too many people. The next part is where we get into things that actually do cost a little bit of money, but things that everybody should do. I created my first will in my 20s because I was working inside of a law firm and the person started asking me all these personal questions and I said, wow, this is really kind of a strange interview with I'm meeting a new attorney in the office, but this is an attorney that has done estate documents for a living and realizing that uh, us young lawyers, unlike every, like, or should say like everybody else, the last thing we're gonna think of is what we're going to do with our future. And she asked all the questions and she said, okay, now I need for you to come in with your wife and let's go sit down and sign all of your estate documents, assuming that she agrees with all the things you just told me. But these are things that we need to do. If we have minor children in the house, do we not want to have a will that designates who takes care of our minor child? God forbid that something happens to us. Or the worst case, when you have a husband and a wife or two partners that go down together and next thing you know, there's, who's taking care of the children? So even at a young age, you should have a will for nothing else to make sure you say, who will take care of our children in the future? Do you want to have the courts make that decision? If you don't have a will, it's up to the judge. And worst thing that happens, and I've seen this happen too frequently, where we have one side of the other family and the other side of the family arguing as to who gets the kids, and you may not want it to be either one of them. You may want it to be one of your friends or somebody else that you know to say that person's gonna better raise my children. So estate documents and all those things are things that we really need to take care of and it's never too early. Now when it comes to the documents, it's also important to realize that we have different types of people. We have people that might be great in raising our kids but would be the absolute worst with our money. Everybody has to serve a role, and it can be two different people that you can choose, or if you don't have people that you trust, there are even financial institutions, such as the trust department at your bank, that can sit down and be the executors of administering all of your financial affairs. There's a lot of different ways, and it's all up to you if you create the documents versus the courts making those decisions. So, you can have somebody raising your children and somebody else taking care of the money because I can tell you, some people are great at one and some people are awful at the other. Oh, Johnny wants a new car, here. It's not my money anyhow. 
Don't let that happen. Choose different people to choose the roles or choose one person that can do both, but make it, the decision yours. Other things when we're doing our estate documents is thinking about medical caregivers. Who makes that decision if you don't put it on paper? As I said, it's not up to you, it's up to the courts and people fight over this all of the time. Some people may love their spouse there dearly, but their spouse may be the type of person that will do what they want because it's in what they feel is right versus what you say is right. Realize you have the right to sit down and choose a caregiver who can sit down and even overrule your spouse. The creation of these documents is very important and it's never too early to choose. The people that you choose should also understand what some of your rights are. Understand what is the medical decision that's being made. Are they capable of making that medical decision? Will they honor your wishes? Or even worse, how many people in this room, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, have actually even expressed what your wishes are to the person who is your caregiver? And I would say, I would do a survey that more than 80% of you probably have never truly expressed what your true opinions are with your caregiver. And I'm not looking for the hands, but I'm looking around and yes, I'm eyeing you specifically. Have that conversation. Now, also realize when we create legal documents, don't pay attention to what those documents necessarily say on the top line. The legal documents give power. But mere fact that you see a document that may say a power of attorney, that doesn't mean that person has total power over everything. But it also can mean that person does have total power over everything. It's all based upon the content and what's inside those documents that says what that person's rights are. It also means that when you're putting those things on the documents, they have to understand and be willing to accept those roles. I can also tell you the number of people that come to my office and I have these conversations with them, that yes, they've given the power of attorney to somebody, but is that person willing to accept the role? Some people do not want that responsibility. I can tell you, I can't tell you the number of my clients that have asked for me to serve in that role. And I can tell you 99.99% .99 of the time my answer is no way. That includes for people that ask me to create those documents that are even my relatives, and I still say, no way, I'm not doing it. So don't think just because the person may be an accountant or may be a lawyer that they want to assume that role for another person. Have the conversations with the people to make sure they're willing to do it and also make sure that they will honor what your wishes are for whatever powers you are giving. Now, speaking to the caregivers in the room, are you prepared to do what that person wants you to do? If not, it's your obligation to tell them, I, I can't do what it is that you want. We're gonna get into conversations about DNR orders and all kinds of other issues, living will issues. These are scary conversations to have, but they're reality conversations to have. It does not matter your age. Now I tell everybody I'm 35 and I'm still gonna say that even when I'm buried in the ground. <laughs> now Stuart unfortunately did tell everybody I've been practicing law and I'll admit that I was not one of those prodigies. Yes, I did not pass the bar when I was age five. <laughs> but when we're doing these things, we need to make sure that we know it doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter how young we are. We have disabled people in the room in their 20s. We have people passing away in their 20s and even younger. Once you reach the age of majority, guess what? Your parents have no say. Your parents have no rights unless you give them the rights or the court gives them the rights or the doctor happens to be one of those people that will sit down and honor the person's wishes. Doctors do not want to say is it okay for me to speak to so-and-so? The doctors want you to sit down and say, who can I speak to? Can I speak to them by email, text message? We have to realize that the documents that have been created over years do not speak to modern medicine. 
I can tell you that there are free forms, which I'll talk to you about in a few minutes that you can get online, but the problem is those free forms are not the best forms. The free forms have been created years ago and they don't keep up with modern technology and modern medicine and everything else that is out there. So I hate to say the best person to contact is a lawyer. Yes, the best person is to contact a lawyer. And even though this is gonna be recorded, I'm going to criticize my profession with every breath that I have. Be careful to choose somebody that actually knows what they are doing. I know a lot of lawyers out there and one day I see them and they're in criminal court. The next day I see them, they're in family court. The next day I see them, oh, all of a sudden they're doing a real estate closing. And this is reality. I get my license to practice law. You know what that means? I can do anything in the law that I want to with my license. That doesn't mean I can. Trust me, you do not want me representing you if you're convicted of murder. You do not want me to. I would do the best that I could, but I don't know what I'm doing. That's not what I do for a living. That's what I call the drive-by lawyer. The person walks in the door and they will do whatever you want, when you want it, but that doesn't mean they're competent to do so. So it's up to you to sit down and get referrals and recommendations from people that know who does what. I've been in traffic court once in my life because my mother forced me to do it for her when she got a ticket. Yes, I'm saying that online. I won, but she didn't want to go to anybody else. If I or one of my family members gets a ticket, I don't represent myself. But you can never say no to mom. So choose the person for the role. Make sure the person does what they say they're doing. I create a lot of estate documents, but I can tell you, when it comes to the large estates, I bring in my tax attorney to handle it with me for my clients because I know that person knows every in and out of the IRS regulations and how to do it even better than I do. I admit my shortfalls. Not all lawyers will. So let's make sure we get people that know what they're doing. And I've created tons of estate documents, but I'm not gonna do it if your estate is worth $100 million because I'm not a tax attorney. So let's make sure we get to the people that know who they can do, how they can do it, and make sure you get somebody that really knows how to create the documents properly for you. And for those caregivers, get them guided to the people that can get you the documents that will enable you to do your job. Because yes, it is a job being a caregiver. We all do it with love for the people that we care about and the people we're taking care of, but wouldn't it be nice to know that we have the authority to do so? Wouldn't it be nice for the doctors not to be pressured to sit down and go to somebody when that person may not be the person that you want them to go to? Make sure your doctors have copies of those documents so they know who they can speak to. And yes, some of the doctors may even give you some of the forms inside of their office. Say, do you have this? Do you not have that? Not all doctors do that, some will. Because the doctors also don't want the responsibility if the documents aren't perfect, because the doctors are not lawyers. Yes, there are some doctors that are lawyers, but those are few and far between. Who can you select to be your caregiver? Johnny is really bright. He's 16. He can do it. No, he cannot. He is not of legal age. He can't make medical decisions. He can't sign a contract, no matter how bright little Johnny might be. I want my best friend, Mary, to sit down and make my medical decisions. Mary is your best friend. She's not your relative. She has no authority to do so. Even if you bring her to the office with you, create the documents to give Mary the power. Let her take care of it for you as long as Mary is willing to do so. Realize, I'm sure everybody by now has heard of HIPAA and all these other privacy regulations and all these other things that are out there. Well, a doctor can't give the medical records to your caregiver for you to, that caregiver to be able to make an educated decision without a paper that gives that doctor the authority to share the information. A good healthcare surrogate form gives even the powers to get medical records if you want that person to have it. So again, choose the person for the role and get that person the documents that give them the authority to do so. 
and realize once you give that healthcare for, surrogate form out, that person can overrule your family as a friend because you gave that person the authority to do so. Now let's talk about some of the estate documents. We have wills and we have trust. A will means nothing until the day that the person passes away. So we're not going to create a will that gives somebody a health care power. The will kicks into effect when you are gone. A trust is something that can be created during your lifetime. You can transfer your assets to a trust and that gives you the ability to avoid probate to a great extent for whatever the trust owns. You're going to hear a lot of legal terminology as you go through life. Wills are governed by the personal representative, which is the person that is given the power to administer your estate. A trust gives a trustee the power. But guess what? I can create a trust that gives the person that created the trust the power because you can be the person creating the trust, meaning the grantor, and you can also be the trustee. So it means you can control your own financial affairs. But guess what else it can do? It can appoint what we call a successor trustee that kicks in when the person becomes incapacitated. So if your assets are in a trust, the successor trustee kicks into effect and can take care of everything upon somebody becoming incapacitated. A nice way to take care of the administration of an estate. There are also special kinds of trusts that can be created, such as a special needs trust, which should be created with an attorney and it shouldn't be just any attorney, it should be discussed with what we call an elder law attorney. Even though the person may not be an elder, that's the person that usually will create these special needs trust so that you can qualify for some of the benefits that you may have seen in the resource room so you can get qualified for Medicare, Medicaid, and everything else, and you may still have some money to your name, but it's all being held in a special needs trust. Things to really get an understanding of and make sure you get to the person that can create it and it should be going to a lawyer that specializes in creating those specific type of trust. Which again, the word is called an elder law attorney. Let's go to the healthcare surrogate form. A healthcare surrogate form is something that you can get for free. It may not be the world's greatest healthcare surrogate form, but it does give the power. Note 101, how do I get a free healthcare surrogate form? If you were to research and just put in whatever state you're in, your state bar association, like the Florida Bar Association, and put in Florida Bar Association Living Will or Florida Bar Association Healthcare Surrogate Form, it will send you through a series of links and you can download those forms and create them yourself for free. Nothing better than the word free. So yes, I'm taking money out of my own pocket to tell you how to get some nice free forms. The healthcare surrogate form does not take care of your financial needs. So if you're giving somebody a power only to make medical decisions, create the healthcare surrogate form and they have no access to your money, no power to do anything other than to render a medical decision on your behalf in the event you cannot do so. Now I do consider myself to be invincible. I claim that I'm never gonna die, I'm gonna be around forever. But the truth of the matter is, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, how good a shape you're in. We all hear cases of 20-year-olds dying of a heart attack on a basketball court. These things do happen. Well, shouldn't every one of us have already a plan in place for that person once we reach the age of majority to be able to make medical decisions for us? And the answer is yes. There is not a person in this room that should not have one unless they're under the age of majority. Now, the healthcare powers can also be included in a power of attorney form, where this person can make your financial decisions as well as your healthcare decisions. The question is, who do we trust and how much do we trust the person? Now, my first line on here is the one I want you to read more than anything. The power of attorney form is probably the most dangerous form you can ever create. Because what does the power of attorney form do in many cases? It gives the person the ability to act as if they are you. 
So I tell my clients, if you're going to create a power of attorney form, make sure one, you choose the right person, and number two, make sure you only give that person the power that you want to give them. I've created power of attorney forms for somebody to go speak to Sprint on their person's behalf. It can be that limited. I've created power of attorney forms that give clients, are giving to another person the ability to close out their bank accounts, take out money from their home equity lines, go sell their properties, cash out their securities, enter their safety deposit box, enter into contracts, enter into lawsuits. It can do everything for anybody that exists under the sun. As you can imagine, that latter one is kind of scary. And I want my clients to be scared, and I tell my clients to be scared whenever I'm discussing the concept of a power of attorney form. Too fast? Excuse me? Can I ask a question? Questions are going to be done afterwards, and I will also promise I will stay around even if every person in the room has questions for me after the program even ends. I'm not running out of here because this is stuff I consider to be that important and because I want to make sure I give all the information. So a power of attorney form is something to consider. My power of attorney form that I use as a general form in my office is 14 pages in length. And it has initials next to every paragraph pretty much on the page. And say, do you want to give this power? Initial here. If you don't want to give the power, don't initial in that paragraph. It's a clean, easy way for everybody to understand what the powers are that they can use. But it doesn't have to be 14 pages in length to give power. I've seen power of attorney forms that I will never use that are on a single page and give the same powers as my 14-page document does. does. And those are the ones that scare me because somebody probably put their name on a page and signed it, not realizing the power that they were giving up. Realizing the person doesn't have to be disabled for that power of attorney form to kick in. The person can be perfectly fine, may have been on vacation, just went to the Bahamas for the day, and they come back and everything's gone. It can happen. I've had a client of mine that didn't come to me. He went away on a business trip. His wife, who he thought he trusted, cashed out the equity line, cashed out the brokerage accounts, cashed out absolutely everything that was liquid and took the money out of things that they could get money out of, and he never saw his wife again. Got divorced by publication, because had no idea where she went. It can be a wife, it can be a stranger, it can be anybody that you've given that power to. Understand, when you give power, you give power. Choose the right person, but only give as much power as you want to give up. I have clients of mine that give me their power of attorney form, not to me, but to their relatives when they go and travel. Because they don't trust the person, but they know that I'll give that power of attorney form to the person if that person needed to have it taken into effect because they didn't even trust their family member. Scary, but it's true. So there's a lot of different ways to handle things. Choose the right way and understand that it's not the title on the top of the page. It's what's written in the document. And be very careful with what's written in that document. And you shouldn't be signing things if you don't know what it is. And I don't care if you're talking to a lawyer. I don't care who you're talking to. Ask the questions. And hopefully every one of you that has a power of attorney form right now is going to consider, is it with the right person? And let me see what it really does say on the page. And guess what? If you've given that power, you do have the ability to take it away. So even after you gave that power of attorney form out, it can be revoked. No, you have to tell the person you took the power away. I've taken the power away because otherwise they may still be using that document. You want to get that original document back. You want to tear it up. You want to have it destroyed. And you want to make sure that it is gone. And you want to actually send a letter by certified mail. I hereby revoke my power of attorney form. You no longer have the authority. That way you can go sue the person if they're still trying to use it. Now what about advanced directives? State your preferences. Discuss it. Speak with the people. You may not want to. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, 
Make sure the person knows what your desires are and they will honor them. These documents should, in all cases, really be created by a lawyer. But as I said, you can get a living will. You can get your healthcare surrogate forms online for free, but they're not going to be the best. They're still better than nothing, but if you can get those forms and discuss them with a the lawyer to make sure that they are, we have the ability to create and be very specific as to what the powers are that we want. The generic form that you have will probably be like about a half a page in length and it says, okay, in this situation, in this situation, I do not want to have life-sustaining devices applied. Make sure those wishes are done and share those wishes with your doctor as well, even though your doctor may not want to discuss them. Your advanced directives, like the power of attorney I said, are revocable. We can also terminate those. We can terminate our healthcare surrogate form. We can terminate a DNR. We can terminate just about everything that has ever been created. Just make sure we do so. Make sure you inform your family members who has the power. Make sure those forms are accessible. It's great to have your will, your power of attorney forms, and everything else locked in the safety deposit box. I want it to be secure. How do they get them? It is that basic. The scariest thing I've actually seen a number of times, and I can't tell you how many times I've seen it, is somebody's already administering a will. That doesn't exist. They said, person, my mother died without a will. Next thing you know, they get the access to the bank account and they get into the safety deposit box and they find, oh, guess what? A will does exist. You cannot get into the safety deposit box of another person unless they authorize you to get into it. So what good is it for your forms to be in there unless they have the one, the ability to get into them and two, they know they're there? I mean, how many people in here may have an attorney that's created their documents for them, but do your relatives know who that attorney even is that may have those papers? Or the attorney retired, the attorney died. Those things happen also. I just had to go close out the estate of an attorney when he finally passed away after practicing law for close to 70 years. He's in his 90s and I got to close out the practice and had the fortune of knowing this man who was an incredible man who practiced law up till a week before he died. That also gave me the ability to have incredible amounts of wisdom because I love surrounding myself with a bunch of older lawyers that have been able to share their knowledge with me. The scary part is the office I'm in now is I'm the older statesman. I really don't like that. It's great when you have an attorney walking down the hall. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's see what Father Time has to say about this issue. That's very cold, but he can get away with it. So inform your doctors. Inform your family members. Make sure they really know what it is that you want. And oh, this timer really doesn't get me annoyed. I'm talking too much. Okay, the living will I already started discussing. The living will... Typically, you have these little three things at the bottom of it says, have a terminal condition, have an end stage condition, or you're in a permanent vegetative state. That's generally what the things are. And guess what? You can choose any one of the three, all of the three, or you can add some other things to it if you want to, if you get a specially created form. The DNR form, realize DNR forms only pertain to CPR. It doesn't pertain to whether you want life-sustaining issues taking place. It just means they will not do CPR. So you really need to get an understanding of what the forms are that you are using and make sure that you understand them. Guardianships are what I'll call a last case scenario. That's the worst case. That means you didn't do your proper estate planning. And that means the court is going to make a decision as to who's going to take care of your medical needs and your financial needs. And it's being done after litigation because you actually had to have a lawsuit filed to get a guardianship appointed. Not what we want to do. But guess what? We can even have a pre-need guardian designated. If you go meet with a lawyer, I want to have a pre-need guardian designated in the event they become incapacitated. A nice way of doing things versus having a power of attorney form giving the power. This means I'm already incapacitated and that person now has become my guardian. Another way to do things. 
The written documents will express your desires. That's what they're there for. Not the desires of your relatives. Not the desire of that third cousin twice removed who now has become my next nearest relative and is going to make my decisions for me and I haven't spoken to that person in 50 years. Choose the documents, get them created, especially for people that are not married or people that think that they're married. Guess what? The state of Florida does not have a common law marriage provision. I don't care if you've been together for 30 years. You're not married. You need to sit down and give that person you've been with for the past 30 years, if you want that person to make the medical decisions, the power. Mark that for people in Florida. Common law marriage does not exist in the state of Florida, no matter how long you've been together. And with that, I have a minute and 48 seconds left. I just want to thank you all for having me here. Uh, thank you, Stuart, for hosting this great affair. Uh, if you have questions, I'll be around for the Q&A. And I'll also be around afterwards because I'm sure many people will have questions and they may not want to do it online in front of a whole bunch of people. So come get me. I'm here. Take care. Thank you, Craig. Hey, Craig, where are you going? Don't you, know, don't you know what we're doing here today? Yeah, I think I have a couple. You came already. here to get a plaque, didn't you? Yeah, I That's the only it. reason, right? Say thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Them to say it to you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.